So far, in this second part of the course, we've been looking at the Poisson process, and so far we've looked at it two different ways. First, we've looked at, in a set amount of time, how many arrivals are there, and that had the Poisson distribution. We also looked at it a second way, which is, what's the amount of time between arrivals, the holding time or waiting time, and we saw that that was an exponential distribution. And in this section, we're going to look at the Poisson process in a third way, which is to look at what happens in a very small amount of time. This third way has some advantages over the other two ways. One is that we don't have to make many assumptions here. So before, you know, who says that the number of arrivals has to be Poisson, or who says the waiting time has to be exponential? But here we'll see that very light assumptions still lead us to the Poisson process. So in some sense, the Poisson process is a kind of inevitable or uh, natural uh, way of measuring processes. Uh, if there are intelligent aliens out there, this is the best argument that they also have the Poisson process. Another interesting thing is that we'll see how, by, uh, how looking at what happens to the Poisson process in a very tiny amount of time, it will lead us to see a connection between the Poisson process and differential equations. There is, in fact, quite an important connection between uh, continuous time Markov processes and differential equations. So we'll see that in this section as well. So we're going to start by thinking that if we have an arrivals process, what might we expect to happen in a very small amount of time? So let's consider a small time period that starts at some time t and goes on for just a little bit tau extra. So a small time period from t to t plus tau, where we're thinking of tau as being a very, very small amount of time. And we're going to make some what seem like weak assumptions about what might be true here. So if the time period is very small, I think it seems fair to say that there's a decent chance there won't be any arrivals in such a small time period. So it's quite likely there will be zero arrivals. On the other hand, you know, arrivals do so come sometimes. So we'll say that it's possible there will be one arrival. So possibly one arrival. Uh, but the arrival is more likely to come in a slightly larger proportion of time than a slightly smaller. So let's say the possibility of one arrival is proportional to tau, the length of time we're looking at. So the probability is proportional to tau, because tau is the length of time we're talking about. So if the length of time is twice as long, then maybe the probability of it arriving is twice as big. Uh, what about the chance there'll be more than one arrival? Well, we're looking at a very small amount of time tau here. So in a very small amount of time tau, let's say it's extremely unlikely that two arrivals will come in such a tiny amount of time. So extremely unlikely to be greater than or equal to two arrivals. And those are the only assumptions we're going to make here. So note how those are much weaker assumptions than saying oh, such and such has a Poisson distribution or such and such has an exponential distribution. We're just making some very reasonable comments there. Uh, we are going to need to write down these properly in maths. Uh, and the idea is that the tau, the amount of time, is going to tend to zero because that's what we mean by really, really small in maths. We mean tends to zero. So to write this down, it will save us a lot of effort if we use something called little o notation. Little o notation. You might have seen this before in some previous courses, or this might be new to you. But here we write little o of tau to mean a term of lower order than tau. So remember that tau is very small, so we've got things like constants, which for us will seem very big. Tau, which is, you know, small, but, you know, important. But then things like tau squared, or tau cubed, or tau to the four, 
they're going to be like a tiny thing to a power. So they're going to be really, really, really tiny. So the idea here is that we're going to be allowed to ignore things like tau squared and tau cubed and tau to the 4 as being just ridiculously tiny. And so we'll use little o of t to mean the terms of lower order than tau, the terms that are ridiculously tiny that we can ignore. The formal definition here is that we, if we have some function, we say it's little o of tau. If it tends to zero, but it tends to zero even if we divide it by the very small tau. And this is as tau tends to zero because we're considering very, very small amounts of time. So armed with little o notation, uh, we can write these three bullet points we have at the top uh, in maths. So we're looking at how many arrivals come in a period of time little tau. So probability x t plus tau minus xt, right, those are the number of arrivals between t and t plus tau, just a little bit later. And what's the probability it's j? Well, let's work from the bottom upwards. The thing we said at the bottom was it's extremely unlikely to have greater than two arrivals. So extremely unlikely here means lower order term, little o of tau. So if j is greater than or equal to two, the probability we have Two or more arrivals is little o of tau, just really, really tiny. Uh, we said that there possibly could be one arrival, but probability uh, proportional to tau. So that should be something like a lambda tau for j equals 1. Uh, but it might not be exactly that. It might just be roughly proportional. So let's have lambda tau plus little o of tau, just to allow for it. It might not be exactly lambda tau. And then for j equals 0, well, that, that's just the rest of the probability, right? 1 minus lambda tau plus o tau. Remember, of course, that plus little o of tau and minus little o of tau mean the same thing under our little o notation, right? They both mean something tending to 0. And so the probability that j equals 0 is 1 minus that little bit for the probability that j equals 1. So that's our kind of very loose assumptions in terms of what happens in a tiny time period tau. Maybe I'll explicitly write here, this is as tau tends to zero, and we've used this little, little o of tau notation. It turns out that we have a theorem here, which is uh, consider a stochastic process with the above properties. Uh, when I say the structure above, I mean the one that we just wrote down about the probability of xt plus tau minus xt being j, for so those different probabilities of j. And this theorem says we have a Poisson process. So in other words, even though we wrote down very mild assumptions, we ended up with a Poisson process given this structure. Uh, we'll actually prove this theorem somewhat later on in subsection 15.3. First, in section 15.2, you should read an example of using this new infinitesimal structure uh, to give an alternative proof that the sum of two Poisson processes is, a, is itself a Poisson process. So you can read that yourself, and I'll join you back in subsection 15.3.